Just got the engine out of the 83 F-150. We have uh, low compression in number one cylinder. Pretty sure that came from uh, fuel dumping into it from the power valve on the carburetor. You can see everybody's around 145, 150. There is one at 140. Number one is 35. Uh, pounds of compression and I had uh, squirted oil in it uh, during the compression test and the, uh, the compression goes way up to uh, it actually goes up to like 150 um, so that lets me know it's rings or um, a broken groove in between the top compression ring anxious to get this on the stand and crack it open and see what we got so here's a first look underneath the valve covers after 20 years and uh 200,000 miles uh you know all in all not bad a little grimy here is the oil pan off obviously again not bad but uh was a lot of junk sucked up into that uh, pickup screen uh, first look of the cylinders it's upside down um, on the stand here uh, but at this point, didn't look too bad. Uh, here's our bad piston number one with the uh, broken rings uh, as it was being taken out. Uh, here is number one uh, piston. I'm holding it. You can see there was just uh, there were a couple little fragments of rings that uh, held in there. These are the rings that came out of it. The small little broken pieces are from number one and then those bigger pieces are the top ring from number seven and here's just all the pistons laid out nothing uh nothing special here cam bearings uh put in yesterday all the pistons had the beginnings of uh a crack across the uh bottom of the skirt across the tab um you could see you know a wear mark where it was hitting on the hitting on the cylinder and um you just tap on the tap on the skirt and uh bam it breaks open hey this is what i was talking about whenever you see this might just look like it's scratching but it's actually the beginnings of a crack which i'm gonna hopefully demonstrate uh in one in one take here in a second right. i'm gonna hit this one again that uh, i just hit too low before kind of hoping it you know had a good enough crack where it would have cracked up here even though i hit it low but uh anyhow i mean that appears to be a hairline crack just like the other one had right there so i'm gonna give this one a bigger bigger whack here and see what happens let's see did that break it okay it started to break out there let's see i'm actually kind of looking at this through the through the camera but we can see okay see how there's an infiltration there you can see the coloring there opposed to that where i just chipped it off and this is actually it started to lift out of there but it didn't crack it didn't come loose all the way but you oh there we go we can there we go we can see it there so if you see this kind of wear on your piston yeah in fact it went ahead and cracked all the way up um it's got cracks or it's the very very microscopic beginnings of them so if you see that if you're just trying to do a budget refresh, uh, change your pistons. Uh, you know, on this one, I had one known bad piston where the rings broke, um, which I went and set that out of, out of reach again. Um, and was hoping I was going to get away with just, um, you know, cleaning the pistons, re-ringing it. 
and just replacing one piston but um, after wiping them down and then you know inspecting them closer and seeing the little little hairline in there um, like that first one um, the number one cylinder that one just uh, busted off I mean, with not much effort in fact I'm gonna go back and grab that one so again this is the number one cylinder where you know I had the same same discoloration same wear pattern same shiny part there and you can see the difference in coloration that's where oil and such had already started working its way in and this is where it was just just broke and you know there's the the mess of what was left of the rings and gunk and everything else we can see where that was the piston was knocking around in there hitting the cylinder and that's why it made that number one look so rough which uh, spoiler alert i get that all i do get that all worked out in the end and super spoiler alert i've been driving the truck around for like a month it is running awesome and big difference with well two things having eight cylinders instead of seven and um having that uh performer 21 22 i think it is cam or 2022 whatever that cam is that's in there um big difference thing is awesome so anyhow just be aware of that if you're going to try and get away with um, just a cheap uh, refresh re-ring and you know re-bearing and hone it out and not change pistons um, you see that shininess you have cracks you're gonna have to change the pistons and if you know you're anything under if you're anything 40 or under um, or you know uh, less than 40 go ahead bore it out to go it out to bore it out to 40 um, I wouldn't recommend going over that I mean it's not the end of the world if you do but um, I don't like to go anything over 40 so Hope that was helpful. Now, um, I found a set of uh, Molly rings in my in my stash here that are 40 over. So um, I'll be using these. Um, and I've already my cylinder hones already got fine stones on it. So I'm gonna hone this out. I'm gonna check the end gap and the taper um first uh, before i do anything so i have a baseline and know what it was and then run a hone down there because it's you know I, you know it, uh, it might be close to the edge anyhow but i didn't want to go um i didn't want to bore it out to uh to 60 i just don't like going that far uh, i've got the brake cylinder hone here gonna do the um lift reports my original video clip for this section wouldn't render correctly so I've replaced it with a series of stills to show the progress of honing and the flaws in the cylinders that are revealed most of which I was able to correct and or reduce the severity of the flaws 20 years and 200,000 miles ago when I first rebuilt this engine I had it bored 40 over which is generally as far as I like to go you can go to 60 over, but it does make the cylinder walls all that much thinner. Given that the taper and the ring end gap were all on the top end of the range of acceptability, not to mention the visual condition of the cylinders, I would normally not build this block. But for the purposes of the project being a budget DIY home rebuild, uh, and I was able to barter a set of new 40 over pistons from a friend, and the engine is for myself and normal use i decided to proceed with the block again though honestly if you see and measure wear like this ideally either board if you can keep it under 60 or find another block but it's now no longer a budget 
rebuild project when you involve a machine shop and the cost of a set of pistons which if you do have a Ford or Chevy small block V8 you should be able to find for under two hundred dollars the spike to wear from the compression rings at the top being visible there was only the slightest ridge at the top of the bear that barely caught a fingernail since I was using molly rings I was using fine 400 stones on a three stone drill hone I use mineral spirits as a cutting fluid. A three stone hone will help straighten the cylinders out. Do not use a ball hone for wobbly cylinders such as these. As I honed, I periodically checked piston ring end gap and taper from the top of the cylinder to the bottom and honed till the point that further honing was going to throw the whole cylinder way out of spec just trying to clean up the top. To finish cleaning up the top wear and get the crosshatch in that area, I used round rubber bodywork sanding blocks with 180 uh, and then 400 grit paper. I would never do this on a block for someone else, but again, this is mine and I'm not going to race it. Uh, anyhow, after hand massaging the tops of all eight cylinders, they all cleaned up nicely as you'll see in subsequent uh, assembly videos. It did push the ring end gap and the taper slightly beyond ideal for a few of the cylinders but all in all for normal use it'll be fine for my purposes get these guys out and get the oil galleries clean hope you enjoyed the first of a multi-part series on doing a budget rebuild this was on a ford uh 302 in 1983 if you did like this video and you enjoyed it and you learned some stuff and are looking forward to learning some more Grab your piston smashing hammer and smash that comment button and your pocket sized cylinder hone and hone in on some comments. The next video coming uh, very shortly will be doing a valve job. So um, look forward to doing that and helping you uh, learn a few things along the way on that. And please, if you enjoyed all this, you want to see more, subscribe. Thank you.